Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. So, today we start our brand new batch of YouTube videos. The 2023 reviews have officially begun. We're going to go from the bottom team in the standings all the way up to the top team in the standings, or the top team that missed the playoffs, uh, which I believe is Pittsburgh. Then we're going to go team by team that made the playoffs and lost. Uh, so this should be a fairly long series. All 32 teams will eventually be covered. Uh, but we are starting today with the Anaheim Ducks. And let me just say that, um, yeah, uh, that was a brutal year. Um, this has been a very, that was a very bad season for the Anaheim Ducks. Um, a season that, you know, in 2021-22, they looked promising. They looked like a team that, you know, could push for a wild card spot uh, this coming season. And that didn't happen. Um, they didn't even come close. They they, they didn't. Um, it was it, it not fun at all. So we'll start out with the standings. Um, they went 23, 47, and 12 for 58 points. Uh, they scored 209 goals and led in 338 goals against, which tallies up for a minus 29 difference. They had a 3.54 win percentage, which was by far the worst in the NHL. Uh, they were 12-25 and 4 at home, and they were 11-22 on the road. Yeah, uh, when I said it was a bad year, yeah, it was a bad year. I had this team finishing, I believe, sixth in the division, which is where um, the Hockey News had them. And by the way, we're bringing back some of the legendary notebooks from earlier in the season. We got the fantasy guy right here, uh, which had all of the point proje projections uh, that we're going to go through. We're going to go through my point projections as well. It could be a very long and very uh, incorrect video um, on, on my end for sure. Um, but some other key points here too. Uh, Dallas Eakins, their head coach, was relieved of his, or well, he's not being relieved, but he's uh, parting ways with the team because his contract is now expiring. Um, Eakins wasn't necessarily a bad coach. He just didn't have a very good team in front of him. I would expect him to potentially get an NHL job um, in the very near future, maybe as an assistant coach. We'll see. Um, they had a 13-game losing streak to end the season. Uh, talk about uh, just a brutal way to end your season. Uh, and as well as that, too, they only had one win in March, which we'll get into in a second here. Uh, and that means that they're, that they're last in the standings. So they have the best odds at Connor Bedard. So I guess that's a surplus and a good thing about um, being down this low in the standings. Um, you go month by month. They started off October with a 2-6-1 record where I immediately started looking like an idiot. Um, I said this team could push for a playoff spot. Then they didn't. Uh, November, they were 3-8-2, so a little bit better, but also a little bit worse. Uh, December, they were 4-8-2, so they were steadily improving. January was by far their best month. They went 8-6-1, uh, where they won the most games. And I would like to point out, too, here, that they didn't have regulation wins for a long time. I don't think it was until uh, late November or early December where they had their first regulation win of the season, which, when you think about that, that is insane. You're going nearly 20 games without a regulation win. Unbelievable. Uh, February, they went 4-6-1. Uh, if the All-Star game didn't exist and the NHL played more games, it would likely be a much worse record. Uh, March was when things really fell off the rails, when this team really got bad. And you could you could tell that, yeah, they were... They, they were kind of tanking, but NHL teams don't tank. I got I got to say that obviously teams do not tank, but the thing is they made it look like they were, uh, they were one ten and three in the month of March which is absolutely brutal. And then of course, as I mentioned, uh, that was their last one of the season in March and they went Oh six and one in April, which is just nasty. That is, uh, that, that is just bad. And that, that 13 game losing streak, was freaking painful. That was a painful season to watch. Just like watching that losing streak. I watched the one game against Colorado. I watched them go up 4-2 to two against the Avalanche. And you think, oh, they're going to break their losing streak. Nope. <laughs> oh, my, oh, man, it was a brutal game for Anaheim. Uh, it, it, just a brutal season altogether. And an easily forgettable one, 100%. Uh, the positive things that were there last season... They're all pretty much gone. Like, the power play went back to being terrible. The penalty kill was worse. Just everything in Anaheim seemed bad. Now, 
We're going to go through each team's point scores. We're going to go down through the 10 leaders through the Ducks list. So from literally the first leading score to the 10th leading score, we're going to go through all those guys. However, I want to share my point projections that I posted on my Instagram um, showing, you know, the Anaheim Ducks and what I thought their point scores were going to be this season. So let's start off here. Uh, first in scoring, I had Trevor Zegres, 32 goals, uh, 48 assists for 80 points. I didn't have that wrong. He did lead the team in scoring, just not those numbers, uh, which is something you'll see pretty commonly. Uh, Troy Terry, I also got that right. I had him second. Uh, I, had, I had him scoring 35 goals, uh, 39 assists for 74 points. Third in scoring, I had Strom, which I was wrong about. Uh, 23 goals, 29 assists, 52 points. Fourth, I had McTavish with 21 goals, 22 assists for 43 points. And then fifth, I had John Klingberg for some reason uh, with 12 goals, 20 assists, for 32 points. Uh, that not good. Uh, no, no, no. I had two of those five right uh, in the order, and not even like any of the point scores I had correct. Um, a lot of these players did significantly worse than I thought they were going to. So, yikes. Uh, that's not not a good look for me. Uh, anyways, let's go through their real point scores now uh, and their real stats, and then we'll compare them to the Hockey News' point projections. Uh, Zegres, in reality this season, he had 81 games played, 23 goals, 42 assists for 65 points. The Hockey News had him at a projected 66-point scoring mark this season. So overall, the Hockey News was more correct than I was. But obviously, you know, being on a bad team like that, Zegres' frustration clearly showed a lot this year. Uh, but still... Uh, he looked solid uh, when he had to. Uh, Troy Terry, who was their all-star game uh, selection uh, person. Um, Terry this season had 70 games played, 23 goals, 38 assists for 61 points. The Hockey News had him projected at a 65-point scoring rate. Uh, so overall, that was not too bad there. Um, Troy Terry didn't have that bad of a season, but um, obviously, you know, not as good of a year as he did last year. But, I mean, when you're on a team that is as bad as the Ducks, Thing, you're not going to do so well. Um, their third in scoring was Cam Fowler. So I didn't have him in there at all. Neither did the Hockey News. Uh, 82 games played, 10 goals, 38 assists for 48 points. The Hockey News had him a, at a projected 31 points. Uh, so I actually think I might have been more correct than they were. Uh, but Fowler, surprisingly, he was one of the bright spots uh, for the, the Ducks. He had a much better season than many people thought he was going to. Um, but I'll give credit to Fowler where it's due. He played the, I think he played the most minutes in a game in NHL history as well. Uh, so, I mean, like he is absolutely hogging up time on the blue line and you got to think that, you know, Anaheim heading into next season, they really need to think, well, are we going to rely on these defensive guys and the young players to help grow this blue line? Or are we going to have to go out and get someone like we did John Klingberg, but maybe somebody with more term and would want to stay on a team like this. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, fourth in scoring was Mason McTavish, who is a rookie this season. We'll discuss him in a few days with our Calder video. McTavish, 80 games played, 17 goals, 26 assists uh, for 43 points. The Hockey News had him at a projected 41 points. I don't know how the Hockey News is getting all this stuff so correctly, but they are. Uh, McTavish, been a solid rookie this year. One of the other positive points with Anaheim. Um, next season, hopefully with a very high draft pick, whether it's Bedard, whether it's Fantilli, whether it's some one of those other guys. I definitely do hope that, you know, uh, McTavish could play a huge role on that first line with Zegres and whoever uh, the Ducks select in this year's draft, if it is Bedard. Uh, fourth or fifth in scoring, sorry, was Frank Vetrano. Uh, Vetrano this season had 81 games played, 22 goals, 19 assists for 41 points. Vetrano, the Hockey News had him at a projected 31 points. Uh, so Vetrano had a pretty solid season for Hockey News standards. Uh, but yeah, Frank Vetrano, solid forward, uh, played good at points this season when he had to. Uh, Ryan Strom this year, uh, he played 82 games, played at 15 goals, 26 assists for 41 points. The Hockey News had him at a projected 43 points. Strom came over from the from the New York Rangers, and I thought he was going to be a really solid center. Uh, he wasn't as good as he was in those years with Winnipeg, but hey, on a bad team, what are you going to do? It's a big adjustment. Um, we'll see how these guys will do in the next season because I think they will do a, have a bounce back here for sure. Um, for seventh in scoring was Adam Henrique. 
uh, with 62 games played, 22 goals, 16 assists for 38 points. The Hockey News had him at a projected uh, 48 points. Next up then, you had Kevin Shattenkirk, who I said should have gotten traded, but he didn't. Uh, Shattenkirk, 75 games played, 4 goals, 23 assists for 27 points. Uh, the Hockey News had him at a projected 32 points this season. Um Ninth in scoring is Jacob Silverberg with 81 games played, 10 goals, 16 assists for 26 points. The Hockey News had him projected at a 28-point marker. And then the 10th scoring leader is Max Jones with 69 games played, 9 goals, 10 assists for 19 points. And Jones was projected to score 30 points uh, by the Hockey News this season. So uh, when you look at that, not a lot of offense, and that's the biggest issue with Anaheim, only scoring 200 goals this year. Um, not really that much offense that you definitely need out of a team like Anaheim. Your highest score was 23 goals, and nothing else really came close to that. Um, so we definitely are going to need to see some good offense out of Anaheim next season. Try, try to a power or try to acquire uh, some better star power for sure uh, if you want to make that jump to the playoffs next season. As it goes for goaltending, and in previous years, that has been a bright spot for Anaheim. However, uh, it really wasn't this year. You start off with John Gibson, who actually had the worst stats out of all the goalies that played this season. 53 games played, 14-31-8, a 3.99 goals against average, and a .899 save percentage. Now, you might be saying, oh, for a last-place team, that, that's average. But for a guy like John Gibson, who's played on multiple really bad Ducks teams, those stats are not good whatsoever. So, Gibson for sure had a down season here. Uh, and I'm just hoping that he will bounce back and that this is just a one-off season uh, because if this affects him for the rest of his, of his career, uh, the Ducks could be screwed, uh, to be honest. Uh, then you had Anthony Stolarz, 5-6 in a record, a 3.73 goals against average, and a .899 C percentage. So Stolarz there, of course, um, not a he, he was better than most of the players on this team, uh, but I don't think Stolarz comes back after the offseason. And that sucks because he played well in the last season with Anaheim, but this season just couldn't click. Uh, and then the other goalie was Lucas Dostal with 19 games played, a 4-10-3 record, a 3.78 goals against average, and a .901 save percentage. Um, Dostal has looked very bright, at, very bright at, top, at times this season. And, I mean, he could very well be the backup next year uh, if Anaheim decides to go in that direction and they decide to let Stolarz walk and they go with a gibson Dostal tandem. I could very well see that happening. It's for sure possible. It's actually probably the most likely thing to happen. Uh, so that does it for player stats. Uh, the one last thing we'll do before we get into the future or basically what their offseasons could look like uh, is the trades. Uh, they dealt John Klingberg over to the Minnesota Wild. Um, that was one of the bigger trades, of course. They made out with not that bad of a haul in it. Um, Klingberg, solid defender, doing solid with Minnesota right now. But his stats with Anaheim were in the toilet. And I said that in the preview, that if he was bad or the Ducks were bad, they could flip him easily. And they did so um, pretty pretty easily. Uh, then you got Dmitry Kulikov, who went to the Pittsburgh Penguins. In exchange, the Ducks got back uh, Brock McGinn, uh, who I feel like has been with the Ducks before. But uh, Kulikov... Both defensemen there were defenders that were brought in to be, you know, a part of that blue line and really kind of fix it, but it hasn't looked that way. Um, so I'm really wondering there, you know, like what, what Anaheim is planning on doing coming into this coming into this offseason. Um, anyways, that's it for the overall season review. You can put that all behind you now. We're going to take a look at what their future is going to look like and what they're going to have to do this offseason. Uh, their UFAs or their unrestricted free agents. Uh, you got Derek Grant. Kevin Shattenkirk, Nathan Bilyeu, Scott Harrington, John Moore, and Anthony Stolarz. So I think all of these guys are most likely to walk, except for maybe Derek Grant, Kevin Shattenkirk, and maybe Anthony Stolarz. But really, I'm not entirely too sure. I think they likely want to go with a uh, Dostal Gibson tandem. Um, but I think that Derek Grant and Shattenkirk could very well come back. Everybody else is probably susceptible to walking. Um, as it goes for the restricted free agents, uh, you have some notable names. You have Max Comtois, uh, Troy Terry, Trevor Zegres, Simone Benoit, Lucas Dostal, and Jamie Drysdale. So some of these guys here, uh, Max Comtois really has not been the guy that they expect him to be. So I actually imagine they won't qualify him, and he will likely walk in this offseason. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, Troy Terry and T Trevor Zegres are going to take up a lot of the cap space uh, with a three-point uh, – they have three – 
or $13 million in cap space, almost $14 million. But with some of these guys coming off the books, uh, they're for sure going to have some more cap space to work with. Um, but yeah, uh, Terry and Zegers are going to take up the most amount of cap space there. Uh, Drysdale, I would imagine, gets a bridge deal. Um, he hasn't proved himself yet. And as well as that, too, he's also been dealing with injury problems. So that definitely sucks to deal with early in your career. And then Dostal, uh, I would imagine he gets signed as well. But we'll see. Um, as it goes for the draft, they have one first-round pick, which could be the first overall pick very well. Uh, they have three seconds, which could work if they want to move up in the draft and get some higher first-round draft picks, which they very well could, and they can make their future even more stacked. Uh, they got two third-round picks. They got one fourth-round pick, one fifth, one sixth, and no seventh. So, obviously, there they got some pretty solid draft capital uh, for this year's uh, draft, and it's good to have that because it's going to be a very stacked draft this year. And I'm definitely excited for that. And the last thing I want to take a look at in this video is their overall future. Who are the guys that are coming up into this roster? Uh, Pavel Mintukov uh, was drafted last year. A solid defenseman. Um, could be playing a big role in next season. Jacob Peralt, I thought he would make the jump this year. I don't believe he did. I believe he's still in San Diego. Uh, you got Braden Tracy. Uh, Tracy still looking as an interesting B-level prospect. Might not be the guy we thought he was going to be originally, uh, but still a solid player. You got Drew Hellison. Hellison made his debut this season uh, with Anaheim since being traded from Colorado in the Josh Manson deal. And then last but not least, you got Olin Zellweger, who has looked good in the World Juniors. So yeah, obviously this is a season that Anaheim can forget 100%. And if I'm them, I am looking forward to the draft. Looking forward to free agency. Looking forward to making some trades. This should be the final year. And I'm going to say this knock on wood. This should be the final year where they're down this low in the standings. The next couple of seasons, they should be starting to compete for a playoff spot. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on the Anaheim Ducks in the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching. For all your support, I really do appreciate it. Uh, we've made a lot of Ducks videos this year. This will be the last one for a little bit. Uh, next up will be the Columbus Blue Jackets 2023 review. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.